Cobb Douglas preferences. Whenever you have a utility of two goods represented as x1 to the power c and x2 to the power d, this is your Cobb Douglas preferences representation. Generally, c and d are chosen such that c plus d sum up to 1. We will discuss more about this later. If you take c equal to half and d is equal to also half, your utility will be formed as x1 to the power half and x to the power half, which means that it's just root of x1, x2. So let's say I want to construct an indifference curve for this. So let me label it as uh, 2 for instance. So x1, x2 is equal to 4. Now when x1, x2 is equal to 4, I can simply make this as an IC. Over here, this is your good 2, this is your good 1 and x1, x2 is equal to 4. Now let's change it to let's say 3. So this will change to 9. So you can increase it to 9 over here. And one more thing which you need to remember if you have not noticed till now is that these are rectangular hyperbola, right? So these rectangular hyperbola are like perfect representation of our well-behaved preferences. You remember the assumptions for well-behaved preferences? So generally, the Cobb-Douglas preference structure is used to give us the well-behaved preference example because they look very similar to what all the assumptions point out to of well-behaved preferences. So what if, if I choose C is equal to 2 and D is equal to 1? In that case also, I can convert it to this form. How? So if this is the situation, my utility will look like x1 to the power 2 and x2 to the power 1. If you remember that under monotonic transformations, my utility value changes, but the underlying preferences remain the same. So I can represent the preference with a modified utility function, right? And that will be this. If I just raise it to a power of 1 by 3. Why 3? 2 plus 1 is 3. So 3. So this will give us a modified utility function x1 to the power 2 by 3 and x2 to the power, oh this was x2, power 1 by 3. So over here now the sum becomes 1 because 2 by 3 plus 1 by 3 is 1. 